Next news is out of Pakistan in Norway. Pakistan conveys deep concern to Norway over desecration of Holy Quran. Okay, so uh, in Norway, there was a stop the Islamization of Norway protest that was being held by a bunch of right-wing uh, extremists um, where they attempted to burn a copy of the Quran. Well, a man named Umar Ilyas was a Muslim man. He prevented them from burning uh, the Holy Scripture, um, but the leader of the group threw the Quran in, the, in a waste container. Okay, so Pakistan summoned Norway's ambassador, all right, uh, the ambassador to the foreign office. I don't know who this ambassador was. Anyways, they, they expressed deep concern over this, right? Well, the ambassador actually agreed with Pakistan and what? said that this is uh, considered hate hate speech. Um, now they're they're looking into this to see if this can be considered hate speech uh, and trying to they're they're saying that this is um, these kind of demonstrations only promote hatred and extremism, um, and that all religions are and must stay respectable. Um, that Islamophobia is a threat to global peace and harmony. Um, but here's here's one of the biggest problems with all of this, is they're actually saying that anything that Muslims get extra um, hurt when somebody criticizes their religion or uh, Prophet Muhammad. So because they become extremely hurt, uh, this is an attack on people. The, the, an attack on the ideology is an attack on people. And because of their feelings? Yeah. Uh, and and, and so they bring this, they, they brought up a situation where they said, you know, um, I've seen a movie that is a Christian saying this, right? I've seen a movie where they, uh, they attacked Jesus Christ, right? Um, and, you know, we're able to handle that. But we need to understand that, you know, the, the Islamic culture doesn't handle people making fun of, of their prophet in their their religion so we need to be more sensitive towards them to me i think if we're saying that another group of people can't handle the same thing we can handle i think that that that, that is bigoted I yeah think that's outrageous that's bigotry of lower expectations so you're saying yeah. like oh us christians we're mature enough to to accept uh, people criticizing or making fun of jesus but these poor pakistanis they're just they're just so sensitive Right, so yeah. we can't hurt their feelings. Like, so you're yeah. the bigots here. They said that it generates emotional pain wow. um, amongst the among the followers. So people who do this, this is no longer freedom of speech. Mm. Um, burning the Quran <clears throat> is not freedom of speech because it causes pain to people. But what's what? Like, so wait. So we have a new definition of freedom of speech. Free of speech means to them means speech that doesn't cause pain to people. I mean, if that's if that was to people's feelings, if that was freedom of speech, then we wouldn't need free speech laws because it would be because everybody would be just saying things that everybody else would be like, well, I'm not hurt by that, so I don't need to shut that down because nobody is upset about it. The whole point of having free speech free speech laws and freedom of expression laws standards is because some people want to use their hurt feelings to shut down the speech if you only say things that other people are not hurt by it then you wouldn't even need freedom of expression laws like are you are these people serious i mean imagine we use these standards on on them right i'm an ex-muslim okay i i left islam and my feelings get hurt by the quran the quran constant the quran and the hadith Islamic scripture constantly uh, refers to kafirun, all three of us here, as people that deserve to be tortured for eternity. Well, that just hurts my feeling. Ban the, b I almost swore, ban the Quran, ban the effing Quran, okay? Because it hurts my feeling. I'm, by the way, just to be clear for the few people out there that don't get it, I'm not actually in, uh, in um, in favor of banning the Quran because I'm not a sensitive snowflake. I could take it, right? Go ahead and promote your nonsense everywhere. I'll just fight against it in a, in you know, by talking, talking against it. But I'm not in favor of banning your nonsensical book, right? But if I, if you, if we apply the same standards to you, 
my you know this is a fi- the Quran is offensive to me ban are you gonna uh, allow me to ban that like think so here's the thing they they are upset that the book the paper paper was burned okay you're worried about paper I'm talking about a book that says I I should be burned I should be burned my body needs to be burned forever okay so if they're hurt by paper being if they if their feelings are hurt by paper being burned then what about my feelings about my my body and my family's body and everybody that I love being burned for eternity so my my, my was my feeling is going to matter in the equation as well are we going to ban the quran and another double standard like imagine this guy saying this ambassador no from Norway saying what saying oh uh, oh yeah I, I think the burning the Quran just encourages extreme extremism you know what actually encourages extremism the Quran right so imagine imagine if you the um, Norway called out the Pakistani ambassador and they said so right now the headlines say Pakistan conveys deep concerns to Norway over the secretion of holy Quran imagine if the title was Norway concerns deep concerns to Pakistan over extremism due to the influence of Quran imagine the uproar imagine the reaction the entire Muslim community would have to that imagine how many people would have been calling Norway uh, Norway's uh, you know government bigoted and all of that which which actually that would be a more accurate statement you know what the reaction to this should be the problem with this is that only alt-right people are, you know, I burned the Quran, I have it on YouTube, but we can't let the alt-right people be the champions of freedom of expression. Because I could tell you, if the alt-right was in power, right, if alt-right had more influence than the, these far leftists, they would have been suppressing free speech as well, right? So the alt-right just pretends to be the champion of free speech, but we know historically always when they're in power, everything becomes like, uh, you, you know, the, the left calls it problematic, uh, the far right calls it, what do they, what do they call it? Uh, what, what is their version of haram? I forgot the word that they use, but they they are the they are also the champions. Of, they they're not the champions of freedom of speech. They will they will restrict freedom of speech as well. They just they, the far right is only in favor of free speech because right now they're not in power and they want to be able to say what they want to be able to say, and other people are trying to shut them down. But for this, we need to steal the platform away from far right when it comes to promoting free freedom of speech and take it to people that are actually the dep- um, defenders of uh, enlightenment values we need to steal it from the, both the far right and the far left pretends to be for for enlightenment values the far right by taking the freedom of expression mantle and pretending they fight that even though they're not technically for it they will uh, they will betray it and the far left by using lgbt and um, uh, race, uh, you know, fighting racism uh, and all that stuff, which is not really their agenda. Their agenda is something else. But they use all that enlightenment values, which is treating all people equally, uh, you know, equal opportunity, not equal outcome, equal opportunity. They use that enlightenment value as their, uh, as a tool for their um, real agenda, right? Right. Uh, so both the far right and far left use some of the enlightenment values to try to gain power uh, and become more relevant and we the actual defenders of enlightenment values need to take these away from them not by force but by actually doing it ourselves and how do we do that by burning the Quran and if you're in Norway you have to respond to this you have to respond to this you have to go out and burn a Quran burn the Quran don't be don't let the alt-right people be the only people that are burning the Quran you need to this needs to backfire if anybody is suggesting that your freedom of expression needs to be limited in any form of any way even the suggestion of that needs to backfire and a lot of people need to go out and be like oh is this what we you you don't want us to do well now we're going to do it a lot more anyway sorry I went for too long let me see what the top comment is top comment is saying Anna is saying respecting a book but not Woman funny that also um, hailing a person who physically attacks someone as a hero is wrong on so many levels. Yeah, actually, this guy that was burying the Quran, the alt-right guy, is he an alt-right guy or is that just something they're saying? Because they, a lot of times they're saying that uh, he probably, I don't know, is he? And, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, just remember that we don't know if this guy was actually alt-right because I've been called alt-right many times. Um, 
So and I very right because it was when he when the guy was burning a Quran, this Muslim guy just comes out and punches him in the face, doesn't he? Or attacks him. Oh yeah, like he attacks him. Okay, so uh, something I didn't really get into a lot of detail about, but the the Muslim man who was offended by this protest um, and stopped him from burning the Quran, he full on attacked. Mm. um, He full on attacked the the protester. And he's been seen as a hero. So see, like, see the double standard. Um, One man is attacking an object, and he's the hateful person. Another man responds by physically attacking a person. And he's seen as a hero. Right? In this scenario, I'm on the side of the person that's being attacked. Again, I don't care who you are. I, if you, you, could be, you could be ISIS. You could be a Nazi. You could be, an, um, you could be KKK. You could be a far-right Christian extremist. If you're just saying words and somebody physically attacks you, whatever your views are, I'm, I'm, I'm on your side. Even if your views are that I, as an ex-Muslim, need to die and be tortured to death, if all you're doing is talking and somebody wants to physically attack you, I'm against that person and I'm on your side. I'm well, not not on your view side, but you know what I mean. Uh, Craig is saying a friend of mine left Pakistan in fear of her life and that of her family because she's Christian. But burning a book is enough to force a sit down with a foreign ambassador. Makes sense. Wow. Yeah, see, like, if these people actually cared about extremism, <laughs> it's so, you know, it's so amazing. Pakistan is talking about, oh, this causes extremism. Look at your country, Pakistan. Look at the amount of extremism that you have encouraged in your country. You're worried about burning a book. Like, ah, uh, jeez, okay. Fe- Fevzi is saying, whatever nonsense a religious book may contain, there is no need to go to such extent such as burning it. Nonsense! If people are saying you can't burn a book, then you have to burn a book. You ha- that's not an extreme p- position. It's just a book. It's just paper and ink. The, co- the, the only time that burning a book was a problem was during, the, the, during Nazi time where they were taking other people's property. You know what? If you were burning a Quran, just make sure it's your own Quran. Don't go take other people's books and burn it, right? You know, and don't do it as a form of censorship. You can't do it as a form of censorship anymore because the Quran is app available to. There's so many free apps of Quran, and uh, you know, there's online. It's everywhere. That's it's not censorship. If you buy a Quran and burn it yourself, you haven't destroyed anyone else's property. You paid for it. You own that property. You're like, oh, this is what the Nazis. The Nazis used to burn books. Well, yeah, it wasn't their books. It took that was a form of censorship when they did it because they were taking. Uh, they, they, when they were doing it, they were trying to stop the flow of information. Okay, when you burn a book, Quran today, you're actually might be increasing the flow of information because pe- more more people want to might want to read what's in it, so that it's deserving of burning. Okay, just just make if you're burning a Quran, just make sure you're doing it in a very very safe way, right? B- you know, be very careful. Um, but it, it's not an extreme position. You know, the only thing valuable valuable about a book is the content within it. The ink and the paper, there's nothing thick, sacred about the, the, the ink, okay? Fevzi continues, uh, that draws more hatred. The religious verses uh, should be questioned, made fun of, bur- uh, but not burnt. They will de- uh, decay eventually. No, that's nonsense because when you're... Bur- okay, so... The, strat- the reason why we're burning the Quran is not because that's our form of fighting against what is, uh, you know, co- uh, f- re- responding to his claims. Because guess what? We do that as well. We take the verses of the Quran and we analyze it and we tell you why they're all nonsense. We do that. When we burn the Quran, that has a different purpose. When we burn the Quran, that's a response to people trying to make the Quran sacred in a way and telling us that we shouldn't be burning the Quran. That's more of a free speech position rather than responding to the verses of the Quran position. Yeah, of course, if you want to respond to why the verses in the Quran are nonsense, burning it is not going to achieve much. Okay, but guess what? That's that's not why we're burning the Quran. We burn the Quran because people tell us we shouldn't, we can't, it's illegal or all that nonsense. That's a more of a free speech position. And it's not an extreme position. When I burn the Quran and people say, well, that's hateful. I burn a copy of my own book. Why there, the, my book is Why There Is No God. I burn a copy of my own book right next to it. Because look, oh, look, if this was hateful towards any group of people, that means that I'm, I'm hateful towards myself. It's nonsense. 
It's absolutely nonsense. There's nothing sacred about a book. Anything useful about a book is the content within it, and that content is still there, and access, everyone has a, access to it. I have three copies of the Quran. I burn only one of them because I, I the two other ones are I want to keep because I want to keep reading the Quran and analyze it, and I like um, I like to do that with my. Um, anyways, so I'm not getting into too much, but it, oh my God. so I ex top three comments. Two of them were good. One of them I completely disagree with. Do you guys want to add anything? No. Uh, I feel like uh, this kind of stuff is the reason why many people are changing their votes from the left to the alt right. Yeah. So we need to make sure that people understand that. Uh, again, I left. I mean, the f we have to make sure first of all that the far left doesn't represent the left. And also the alternative to the far left is not the far right. There are actual real champions of enlightenment values. And do you, we need to be louder and we need to make a home for these people because the, the you know, uh, we shouldn't make the reason why far right grew for a bit. And I think the growth is going to stop at some point. Uh, but because a lot of people saw that as the only alternative, that's why we need to be there. That's why other people need to burn the Quran. Other people that are not part of the alt-right need to burn the Quran as a huge signal to people for a home that are actually the people that are actually standing for freedom of expression. And they will always fight for freedom of expression, not only when it's inconvenient, right? The alt-right right now is standing for freedom of expression because it's in their interest. We fight for freedom of expression for everybody, including our enemies. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.